So we're here today at Shelter to Soldier, which is the foundation that we really want to support and get behind. And today we're going to learn about how they actually get a dog from the shelter, um, how they actually look at what kind of dog we're going to get from the shelter to be trained up throughout the year, and the training that they go through. We're going to meet some amazing people today. Graham, who runs the organization, Vic, who's a vet that actually has had Kira, his dog, for two years, and, and we'll see all of this today. So uh, let's go on through and see what we've got going on and see what we can do. So I'm going to introduce you to a, a really very special guy, uh, Graham, who, believe it or not, I've known for quite a long time. He trained two of my dogs, uh, Tonka and, and Mina, some time ago. You know, things happen for a reason. So, Graham, I'm so chuffed that it's you that has this organisation because I know how good you are with training the dogs. And let us know yeah. why you started it and, and where we are today. Sure. Um, you know, it's a long story and I'll give you the short version, but I've been a dog trainer in the community in San Diego now for about 15 years and started at local shelters, um, blood, sweat and tears, rehabilitating dogs that were potentially deemed unadoptable and finding ways to work through these behaviors to make them adoptable. For years I trained service dogs privately. Um, it was fulfilling and fun because you're still helping people, but at the end of the day, you know, I was doing it uh, as my job. Yeah. And there, there's more to taking my skill set and what I know how to do and putting it to work to give back. The organization's much bigger than us. It's a mission to create awareness for the 20 veteran suicides a day, and it's a mission to create awareness for um, the, the amount of dogs being euthanized across yeah. our nation every day. 3,200, 3, amazing. People volunteered their time, and we started the organization, and bit by bit, with more support, from companies like yourself at Unite, we are growing and we're able to help more dogs and more veterans. We have nine dogs uh, placed, um, already uh, matched with veterans. Which uh, is incredible because nine dogs in, but they're all placed. So that to me shows that you could probably take 90 if you could. I mean, it, it we, must be, you know. We need more, more room, more dogs. Yeah, there's yeah. room for growth because the uh, wait list and the application list of veterans is never ending, sadly. Yeah. And the list of dogs that need to get out of right. shelters and rescue groups is, is currently never and, ending, and too. And that will never end. Yeah, that's no. never going to end. We're here for the long haul. We're ready to help more and more. Uh, we're growing gradually to make sure we keep up with the growth. But, you know, the bottom line is we want to answer the call, and we're doing that. So I'm here with Vic, and this is so exciting, obviously, to be able to meet Vic, who's been through the program, Shelter to Soldier, and his beautiful dog, Kira. And what I want to ask Vic is really how this whole situation came about, and really how it's changed his life as well, and, and how he came through this process. So Vic, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about it. Certainly, certainly. I, first of all, appreciate you being here. This is amazing. Um, my name is Vic Martin. I was a mineman in the United States Navy and uh, I was forward deployed and suffered a brain injury. As a result, also was diagnosed with severe PTSD, uh, severe anxiety disorder, severe depressive disorder. I have uh, two daughters and a son and uh, I I found myself with this brand new diagnosis and um, not really knowing how to handle it or how to deal with it. I w wouldn't um, check the voice messages on my phone. I wouldn't uh, check the mail. I was afraid to leave my house. And as a result, m my daughters suffered. My daughters had uh, lost a father for a time. And it was difficult to always have to tell them no. I couldn't go out in public. I couldn't go to their school for an open house or a function, a fair. I, I was trapped and imprisoned in my own home. And my wife found this organization, Shelter to Soldiers, kind of a last ditch effort. I, I was contemplating suicide and had told her about it because I 
didn't want my children to keep going through this. I wanted to have an endpoint, and I wanted them to be able to heal. And I thought that if I was gone after a period of time, they would be able to heal. And she found this organization, sheltered a soldier, and said, "Hey, will you give this one shot?" And I said, "Sure." And when I went to go meet Graham, it was the first time I had been out of my house in six months. Yeah. Um, I was scared to death, and I but I had this hope and I had this belief that something could happen to change where I was. And and the first meeting that I had with Graham there was this light at the end of the tunnel that was created. And um, when I met Kira, the light got brighter. Yeah. And we graduated and, and the relationship just got stronger and stronger. And she was doing things that she wasn't trained to do, that she was picking up on. Yeah. And she was forcing me out of the house and she was making me secure enough to be able to go to my daughter's celebrations at her school and whatnot. And so it was, awesome to see you can hear her whining right now because she hears my voice and she knows that I'm uh, tense that I'm yeah. I, I uh, my anxiety is high so her whining is to let me know you you should not be in this situation we should excuse ourselves that's incredible Here, I'm okay I that's promise in, that's but, incredible but yeah it's helped me tremendously I've been able to go to open houses with my daughter and share things with my kids that I never thought I was going to get an opportunity to share I thought that chapter had already ended yeah. and now you know m my wife says well I've gotten my husband back and my daughters have gotten their father back and yeah. it's, I feel it's true it's true in every sense of the word so really this organization is it's why you're here now it is right? uh, it's it's, it's helped you to be here I would not be here without a doubt and reading your t-shirt now you know I remember when I first saw that when Graham showed it to me saving lives two at a time uh, it really is. It's it's amazing. It you is. Know, so it, it works. I mean, um, I'm just very touched right now, actually, because this is uh, huge, isn't it? It, it? it When you talk about something that is life-changing, yeah. it's oftentimes something that a lot of people cannot relate to because yeah. they haven't been to that end of the, the road yet. Yeah. Being able, you, who's been through all of this, experienced it, to be able to talk to another vet and, and show that this could happen, wow, brilliant. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Vic. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate that. it. Appreciate Fantastic. you being here. And thank you, Kira. I'm not allowed to pet Kira. She's working. But if I could, I'd give her a massive hug. We're at the San Diego Animal Shelter, and this is where there's a, obviously a lot of dogs here, which you can hear in the background, and we're hoping to get the right ones. So Graham's here. Hey, Graham. All right. Great. What is it we're going to be looking for when we look for this special dog? Yeah, we're looking for uh, dogs about eight months to two and a half years of age. Um, for us, fortunately, we look at all breeds. We're looking for a dog that's uh, approachable, likes to be around people, um, has a strong desire to connect with people. Um, they can't present any aggression issues. I test them around certain noises. I look for what motivates them, their drive motivators. So I've got yeah. toys, oh, cool. treats, cool. see what they want to work for. Yeah. No major medical issues, because these dogs are going to be working right. all day, right? right? Going on airplanes, Yeah. Uh, maybe going to school, going to a job site. An age limit, obviously, I mean, because we want this dog to last some yeah, time. Yeah, so we? we're looking at the oldest dog that we'll adopt into our program is two and a half, okay. given that they're with us 12 to 18 months for training. Yeah. You know, so they're about three and a half at the oldest at adoption. We go row by row. Um, we're looking at dogs 40 pounds to 75 pounds. So we're trying to make life as easy as we can, both on the dog and the recipient. So a lot of things to think about. Yeah, a you've got a lot to consider. And so when we're look, walking through the, the kennels, um, we're looking at all of those factors. So this is where Graham's going to be evaluating the dogs and checking them out as he walks down. So we'll let him walk down and see what he finds.
Oh, what are you gonna give me? Is there more play time, right? This is all great. Great postures, great response. Uh, this is a breed that needs a job, the Belgian Malinois, so we'll talk more in the yard about it. Right. While he's not paying attention, I'll drop the keys behind him just to see how he responds to being startled. If he startles, which I doubt, because he's very confident in himself. Good. And that's what we want to see is an investigation of whatever startled him, so that's good. So we want a dog that's going to be, it, they don't have to be perfect today, because that's what training's for. Do a little handling exam, because these dogs have to be touched and handled often, not only by our team, their handlers, but also veterinarians. So we're looking for tolerance. How old is this? Guy? About a year. About a year? Yeah. Okay. About a year old, Belgian Malinois. Yeah. Um, Very intelligent dog. Right? Highly intelligent, yeah. used for, uh, you know, by police, canine, military. One of the most intelligent dog breeds on the planet. Really? Um, with the right training and the right direction, they're highly trainable. Not a dog you're going to see very often yeah. um, at the shelter. It is a lot of dog to own yeah. as a pet. I mean, it's German Shepherds are, are busy. They love a job. They're, they keep us uh, they keep us busy as, yeah. as pets. This dog is is times three, multiplied yeah. times three. So, uh, Need a lot of work as well, correct? In the yes. Sense that they have to be active. Right. So yeah. you know, for this dog. It'd be best if a program like ours or someone similar yeah. adopted, yeah. rather than just an uh, everyday dog sure. owner that's looking for a pet, but very intelligent dog uh, as a whole. And they're a lot to handle, so could have dug out of the yard, could have jumped over the yard, could have been let go on purpose. Yeah. Lots of reasons why a dog like this could end up as a stray, but Malinois, German Shepherd, they're going to look you up and down and be like, hey, wait a second, who are you? What do you have to offer? <laughs> What's in it for me? Once you earn it through, you know, mutual love and mutual trust and mutual respect, then they're extremely loyal. Yeah, you're eyeballing that fence, aren't you? Yeah. I see you. <laughs> oh, yeah. How much bigger will you get, Craig? Will you get a little bit bigger? Not much bigger. Not much bigger. And how much does he weigh now? Uh, he's probably not. Great news, we've got our dog, and we're gonna follow the dog through the journey, every month, seeing its progression, and how Graham and his team is training the dog and going through it. So exciting, what a beautiful dog, and you could see how happy he was being outside and free. So this is great news for us, and we're very excited. So, good day at the shelter.